Hi everyone, I'm Mara Webster with SAG After Foundation and thank you so much for tuning in to watch another one of our conversations at home videos today. Um, before I hand over to today's panel, I want to continue reminding everyone watching these videos, the SAG After Foundation is a nonprofit organization and we are continuing to raise money for a COVID-19 emergency assistance fund right now. This is working to support actors who are out of work with all of the film and television productions being closed right now. So please check out the videos, the information below this video and consider supporting if you're able to in any way. Um, today we're hugely fortunate to be joined by the wonderful Moni Yakim, who is an incredible movement teacher at Juilliard and one of his former students, Jessica Chastain. Um, so I'd love to just hand it straight over to the two of you. Hey, Moni. Hey, Jessica. <laughs> How are you doing in this uh, strange new world we're living in? I feel, I feel strange in this strange <laughs> new world. I feel, <laughs> I feel everything eerie about everything. Mm. Well, it's, I feel the same, but I feel happy that I get to talk to you. Yes, indeed. Yeah, and um, um, I get to moderate. Now, I'm not a journalist. Everyone knows this, but um, I'm going to do my best moderating this kind of discussion about your life and this documentary about you. And I'm so happy to do it because studying with you was such a, studying under you was such a, um, incredible gift for me and I take all of your lessons into my work so I'm very happy to be here and so thank you for allowing me to to be in this Q&A with you allowing you I mean, yes I'm honored <laughs> thank you Monkey. okay so let's start at the beginning all right so how did you get your start as an actor uh well okay that's a long story but I'll try That's to all right, we got time. Uh, not that much, <laughs> because it is indeed a long story. However, however, uh, I was uh, a kind of a street kid, and I didn't want to do anything after I completed my uh, elementary school. And my older brother, who was absolutely incensed because he wanted me to get some kind of an education. Uh, my father was ill at the time, so my eldest brother took care of me. And uh, he tried to send me to all kinds of evening schools. And I hated studying. I wanted to be in the streets with my friends and having a good time. And uh, so wherever he sent me to whichever school, I held like I could stay there for <laughs> weeks and that was it. And one night he came home an evening and asked me whether I wanted to become an actor. And I don't know why, until now I can't figure it out, why? Because everything he used to ask me, I used to say no. And I just stood up and said, yes, I want to. And he sent me to a uh, theatrical group that just formed, was formed by a British uh, uh, director who used to be with the old Vic and formed a theater in Jerusalem. And he had a friend who actually co founded this theater and my brother just asked him whether do you mind having my brother there just to sit in the during rehearsal so we will not roam the streets and that's how i got into this group and the moment i stepped there and started to listen to them i uh, something within me not consciously but something with this within me uh, uh, told me that I just found my home, that I knew uh, that the first steps to this journey that I had in my life started right there. And you studied under, um, and please forgive my butchered French pronunciation, but you studied under the great Etienne de Creux, 
Then it's That's a very good pronunciation. <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> <laughs> what lessons, he was the creator of the uh, well, of what, so what lessons did you learn? Yeah, uh, 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 I was in this theater in Jerusalem, as I said, for quite a few years until I had to serve in the army. And uh, in the theater, I met a friend who actually was in France and came back to Israel and said that he studied with the crew and intends to go back and study with him. And uh, he was older than me. He is now actually in Denver, Colorado. And yeah. he's, teaching, he's teaching mime and Kabbalah. His name is Samuel Abital. And uh, we decided that after my uh, uh, service in the army, he would go before me to uh, Paris and get for us a place. And we'll start together studying with Etienne de Croix. And uh, actually that was a dream that was materialized. Mm. I was in utter, utter heaven because I fell in love with mime in Israel when I saw a performer by the name of Shaike Ophir, who was a true genius. And he was so magical when I saw him that I decided that's what I wanted uh, to do in the rest of my life, to do mime. And uh, however, when I was in Paris, because I was also an actor, I went to study with George Wilson, the French classics, because French was my mother's tongue, actually. My mother came from Egypt, and she spoke with us only French. And I studied my elementary school in a, uh, a French school, actually, a Catholic school. And uh, yeah, so then I went to study with Mr. De Crew, and it was absolutely hell and heaven. <laughs> it was hell because it was so hard and so demanding, and it was heaven because it was so inspiring and because he embraced me totally. I mm. became uh, one of his favorite performers and I, uh, he invited me to his company and we did beautiful things. And at the same time, we were not allowed even to mention the word of Marcel Marceau at the time with Etienne de Croix. Because you know that Etienne de Croix was the person who actually created modern mime. There were mimes before, you know, we know of mm -hmm. mime since the Greek times, but there was not per se a school for developing this technique. And he started that. And the great Jean-Louis Barreau was his first student. And so was Marcel Marceau. But Marceau went on his own and became hugely popular. That infuriated the crew as being a true French. He hated his guts because of that. So uh, we were not allowed to mention the word Marcel Marceau in his presence. And yet but when you I worked went, with Marcel Marceau, I you did. met your wife. Correct. <laughs> Mina, That's correct. who was also my teacher at Juilliard. Both of you guys were. That's right. So <laughs> I went also to work with Marceau because I felt I'm in France, France, and why shouldn't I go and study as much as I could? And really, how to perform, how to be an entertainer on the stage, because that's what the great it Marceau was. With the crew, it was more the analysis, the physical analysis, you know, that was so incredible. You know, when you move an eye in a certain direction, what does that mean? What does that symbolize? Why do you do it? And if you don't have to do it, and this, by the way, I learned from Stella Adler, because I, I don't know if I told you about it, but Stella hated mine because she and she was trying to get me to stop when she brought me to this country. She tried to get me to stop 
to do mime because she felt that mime was the art of showing rather than the art of being. And in big part, she was right, in big part. Because if you want to show that you are lifting something, you have to give the dimension on it, of it and then to give the feeling of the weight of it. So you are showing at the same time that you are living with, in the situation. And she didn't like it because of that. Because she said, we do not indicate, we do not show, we are and we live. And uh, after doing here, after coming to this country and joining her school, she brought me here after she saw me perform in Paris and she decided that I was talented enough for, for her to bring me here. She, had her, she wanted to make of me a star, that's <laughs> what she said. However, I was so, so taken by mine and my whole heart was into it that all i wanted is to be within four walls and to work with my company and to try and find interesting things in my mind and i felt i felt that after a while i did understand what stella meant you know at the beginning i resented it and we had a lot of clashes between us because of that but after a while, I understood that if you do something, it has to have a meaning and it has to be justified. And you don't do it just for, for the sake of the beauty or aesthetics of the physicality. So if you move an eye, you move a head, you move a finger, it has to have a reason. It has to have a justification. And this I inserted into the mime that I did. And that's why I thought that in the last shows of my company, actually, we did a mime that was not seen in the world at the time. Mm -hmm. And you were also um, a founding member of Juilliard. And I, I believe you're the only remaining one left, right? Working that's and correct. teaching there. That's, I'm that old. No, I don't I mean already left. reached. <laughs> I already reached 35, believe it or not. <laughs> I'm older than you. How did that happen? <laughs> um, so what's it like now teaching? I mean, how, because it's, it's an interesting well, um, situation where our, you know, your class is so physical and to now be teaching on Zoom, you know, how is that for you? Uh, not very good. Not very good, as you know, being in these classes and experiencing mm -hmm. it, uh, that there, are, there is a lot of uh, uh, physical contact mm -hmm. with the actors when we work. So I would say that for me, it was not easy at all. And mm -hmm. frankly, instead of doing a patchwork, you know, just to fill up the time uh, on Zoom, uh, I decided that I would wait until things are clearer about when we get back into the room in order to work. And uh, going myself through the incredible anxiety that we are all going through these days and the inner tension and the, uh, being confused and being lost, you know, within whatever situation we are in because of A, the coronavirus, of course, which started it all. Then, of course, politically, everything is happening. So it's, it's a hard, hard and difficult world on everybody. So instead of teaching that, I decided to actually give a, uh, a uh, session in meditation. Ah, great. But the type of meditation that I myself practice, being with my guru for many years that he taught me, I do not consider myself a guru as far as meditation but I just shared whatever I experienced myself and to do practice myself, myself every day. 
I shared it with the students, with the alumni. I don't know why you didn't get the notice. I, it, I was going to say, I didn't get this invitation, Moni. Well, that's... Uh, I needed it. <laughs> they don't like you, Jessica. That's the no. problem. <laughs> <laughs> I no, would be too distracting. That's what you're supposed to say, Moni. You'd be too distracting in the meditation. <laughs> no, they actually adore you, and I really am surprised because there were a lot of alumni that took this session. Mm. Yeah. So, so well, I remember I took your alumni class actually a couple years ago. That was the physical version, though. Mm-hmm. When we had it, and it was amazing oh, yes, to go back indeed. there. Of course, of course. Yeah, and I will say too, it's what an, how incredible to kind of pivot <clears throat> into meditation during this time, because I find with acting um, that having a kind of focus, you know, of your mind and not to get distracted by little things that are happening in the room, uh, really helps. And meditation is is so great at focusing your mind, your intentions, your breathing. Right. Um, so really, but, that's but incredible are, you did that. By the way, there are, by the way, I call it meditation because it uh, encompasses a lot of levels of uh, practice within it. But I have specific things when I do with the breathing and sounds that mm. release, release tensions, release anxiety, or rather reduce anxiety because you can't release it completely, we still are living there. Yes. And when we wake up from the meditation, it still exists. So it reduces the, the, the sense of anxiety that we go. So these are very specific exercises that uh, I shared with the mm. alumni and the uh, student body that we had. What is an ideal student today? Who, you know, what characteristics? Yeah, I, say, I said it's a very confusing world because uh, studying on Zoom is not uh, the ideal thing, of course, mm -hmm. because there is so much interaction between actors and you can do only to a limited uh, uh, extent, you know, you can transmit uh, the work. However, there are certain aspects of the work, such as speech and voice, and liberal arts that I think uh, are, can work very well on Zoom. Uh, everything that doesn't need to have an, a physical, instinctive uh, reaction, finding the Im in, uh, a physical impulse, and having connection, and having contact with your partners, and seeing your partner in the eyes, and getting from the partner, in order to be able to react, I think that's almost impossible. Almost impossible. I know, I know that a lot of my colleagues, not only at Juilliard, but all over in every school, acting school in, in the States, are trying to find ways to uh, uh, transmit some kind of the teaching. Uh, I just think that it's not the ideal thing. So mm. I'm not too excited about it. And I've seen a lot of things. I've seen actually the other day, uh, the, the uh, uh, Oedipus Rex with Oscar Isaac, who plays Oedipus. And each and every, and uh, John Tarturo was in it, and a few others that were very, very good actors. And each one, actually, I thought Oscar was absolutely brilliant. Each one was very good, very good. However, no one can respond because right. they, see, they see something is happening in the eye of the partner. So it's a very good exposition of how one can go to the character to the extreme in a way of the possibility within the situation. However, the situation is not fluid. It's not, it doesn't flow because there is not this live contact. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, that's like a prologue to your question that I do feel very, very 
compassionate about these young people who want to become actors and who have to start their their uh, their training on Zoom. It's uh, yes. Yeah. I I think that they might gain a lot by understanding a lot of things about the the craft and then when they are able to get into the room to get into really practicing it so if you ask me what i think what i'm looking for uh in an actor when i audition actors is that first of all i want to sense and i can sense that through the zoom i want to sense acting instincts mm -hmm. and you know this is something that we sense we don't uh, even if the the monologue that this person is doing is raw and wrong and the interpretation is not satisfying this doesn't matter there is something from within that projects while the person is doing it that this kind of contact that I can sense between me and that person, the spirit of the person. Uh, that's what I'm looking for in an actor. I'm not looking for, for being polished or being marvelous. The contrary. I like it being raw, but I'd like it coming from somewhere real. Mm -hmm. It's so fascinating you talking about training in mind. Um, with Etienne and then training with um, Stella Adler and how it was two completely different approaches like one was from purely technique or the outside um, and then one was from the inside out so it was like outside first and then one was inside first and it's interesting even talking about this time and talking about the, the teaching on zoom where it feels like when I went to school we started with everything was like reacting, reacting, because you had so many incredible students in the class with you that you were always teaching us to respond to what we were given. Okay. And now it's an interesting thing where with this way of teaching, it's like, okay, now you have to show up with something. It's, it's again, starting from another side of acting and maybe like the way um, Etienne and Stella, you know, created the, the teacher, the actor you are now with these two separate um, starting points perhaps that's something that's happening now it could be really interesting to see well it's it's very interesting what you say it's very interesting because I really really have only respect for the teachers the students that went through it and did, did scenes and mm. worked hard at it and found within the character you know the subtleties and uh, However, when I was watching it on screen, I couldn't help myself but saying, and that's the problem of it, because knowing some of the actors, I know how talented some of them are. And you see them and you see others and you look at the other and says, wow, the camera really loves mm. this space. You know? I can't help by, but, but noticing it. It's not that I'm looking for it. Right. And it, it, uh, it hurts me just because I know that those that do not come across as well on the screen, I know how talented and capable they are. So it's, <laughs> it's a, a uh, for me, it's very emotional actually when I watch yes. that. Yeah, it's it's a it's a fascinating time, and the camera is a fascinating thing because it can really see inside you. So I remember um, someone once telling me that if you have a little crazy in your eye, <laughs> you do better on camera because <laughs> the camera's like, "Ooh, what's going on in there?" Then I should be very very good on camera. <laughs> exactly, both of us. <laughs> so erasing in some sense I know we can't erase where we are right now but um, in this modern world yeah. let's say post corona what do you think an actor needs to have in order to be successful I mean you have so much experience 
working with actors. You've been teaching for, I don't want to age date you, but is it 52 years? At Juilliard. That's crazy. And You're don't amazing. Forget, don't forget that I taught at Stella Adler at the Circle in the Square and my own company for many years, along with Juilliard. So have you been teaching more than 60 years? More than? 60? No. I'm, I'm not 60 <laughs> yet. How could I have Exactly. You're 35. No, actually, <laughs> when I started at Juilliard, I was 12. <laughs> Okay, good, as a founding member. <laughs> um, so what do you think, what do you think actors need in this world to, and from the, the teachers, and from the students that you've worked with, the ones that you've seen become successful, what was a quality that they had that, and something well, that... Um, I'll be honest about it. I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. I once, when I was younger, I used to pretend that I could detect who's going to be successful and who's not, who will be a star. And, and that was just because I taught at the time Meryl Streep, and I think I discovered her in a certain way. Mm. She was in one of the operas I directed at Yale at the time. And I had her do a little part, non-verbal part. And she was so amazing. And I called that evening my wife, Mina, and said, I just discovered the female Brando. Wow. And she said, really? Why don't you use her for the musical you are going to do? I was supposed to do at the time the Umbrellas of Sherbrooke on Broadway. I was signed. To. <laughs> and I asked her, I asked Meryl whether she will leave school in order to get a part on Broadway. And she said, in a second. So uh, we auditioned her. And uh, of course, Michel Legrand, who was there also with uh, Nat Shapiro, the producer, Michel Legrand loved her. She was, I think, absolutely fantastic. And uh, he didn't hear the sound of his sister, because it's uh, his sister who sings it in the, in the film. So that's the story. But since then, I was pretending that I could tell who's going to be successful. It's a good track record and with Meryl Streep. <laughs> over the years, I learned that I was wrong on many, ma in many, 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 many <laughs> cases. Because people I thought highly, highly talented, highly capable, highly everything that one needs to be uh, mm -hmm. an actor. Some of them are in real estate. Some of mm. them are waiting on tables. So I do not pretend that I can tell that anymore, really. I just say uh, to the actors, you know, we don't know what fate is going to do with us. Uh, and I developed actually a, an exercise that's called the whims of fate. A specific exercise that I do that has to do with one life's journey. So we don't know what awaits us. And we, are, we feel so lucky, not only, not only if we become known, household names, etc., but if we have a life in the theater, I received a letter from someone in Ashland uh, some time ah. ago telling me, you know, Moni, I had a beauty, I have a beautiful life in the theater and I'm very happy. I have a family, I live here. So, you know, I just commend these people that are still holding on to it and doing it in different places, bringing their art, their, their all into it. And to those that decided to find a different path, hopefully they are using a lot of what they experienced and learned in their own life in whatever they do. Well, studying with you is like studying how to be human 
and studying how to listen to other people and learning. I always say that acting for me is such a lesson in empathy because you're walking in someone else's shoes. You're opening your heart to someone else, what, what someone else is giving you. You're learning things. Um, you're learning to become someone who has different viewpoints than you do. And so even if someone doesn't take that, let those lessons and become an actor, they, they, I, I think they become a better human being. Um, especially from taking your class. I, 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 I agree with you about that. Uh, there was a time, there was a, I think we live in a different world. It's been many years. The world has changed. And we understand now that we cannot remove ourselves from society, from what's around us, from being compassionate one to another. The world is so hard that actors, because we are emotional people, we can actually embrace in a greater and stronger way. There was a time, there was a time where actors could be selfish, could be nasty, to the people that they worked with, uh, unpleasant if not nasty, uh, uh, thoughtless about their actions. And I think in today's world, we can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I think the world has expanded. It's not anymore just about acting. It's about living as an actor and living as a person. Mm -hmm. That's so beautifully said. <laughs> um, that's why you are who you are. Um, what was there any piece of advice that you've been given? You know, um, throughout your your studying, throughout your te teaching, you, with you know working with so many people that uh, you think is valuable for an actor to have. Yeah. In addition to that great advice you just gave. Uh, you, you know, we all, we all, we all struggle for one thing. And those that don't struggle don't, are not aware. But the struggle is there whether they are aware of it or not. We all struggle to find ourselves. I mean, I was talking to a friend the other day who is very well to do. And they have a son who is very well to do because they are well to do. I mean, they can have everything they want. Mm. And she was complaining that wherever he goes, he's unhappy. Mm. And it's not a mystery. It's not a secret. He's unhappy because he can't find himself. He can't connect with something real that goes on within him. That's a struggle. This is a struggle. And I think if we are aware of it and we breathe with it and we try and do it with ease and as Jesus says, seek and you shall find. If we are aware, this is already the first step. Awareness is a step to growth. There is no growth without awareness. And if we are aware, it will happen. If we are seeking, if we are curious, if we are compassionate, if we are interested, uh, we find what, is, what, what the, our center is. That's beautiful. I can't think of anything better than that, Moni. It's true. You found it. Um, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm still curious. I'm still learning who I am. But uh, no, Knowing you, you will be curious forever. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> My dying day, I'll well, be curious. Cur about curiosity me. is growth. Curiosity yeah. is growth. One curiosity, once curiosity is, is uh, abated, also our our interest in life abates. So mm. to be curious is healthy. Mm -hmm. And speaking of um, curiosity, maybe this might be 
a nice way to kind of end it because I know there's a lot of actors who will be watching this or are watching this and um, are looking to you to, you know, um, in addition to learning about finding themselves, are there any books or anything that you would recommend? And they don't necessarily even have to be acting books. It can be about something else, but any books that you recommend an actor should read um, that should be in their library. Yeah, uh, I didn't think about that because, uh, uh, but I would say- In addition to your book, because I did read your book. <laughs> <laughs> My book is good. You can read it. It's called Creating a Character because I believe that acting is all character. Uh, so that's why I focused on that subject for many years. Uh, and that's why actually the, the, the doc is called Creating a Character. Uh, but you know, as actors, we have tremendous imagination. This is our biggest asset. And there are books that have to do with spirituality because spirituality and imagination, there is a very fine line there. And it's important for actors to dip a little bit into it, in my opinion. So I'm not very good at remembering names of books. But what was the book that I read all the time of uh, Hermann Hesse that he wrote about the Eastern philosophy? Uh, ma, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, I'm not good at remembering names. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, this book I have always with me. I have a book of uh, the Spanish writer uh, uh, about finding the treasure that finally you find it in your own house, in your own mm. uh, So I, I would advise some of these uh, eccentric, if you want to call them, but highly, highly imaginative and instructing in, in how to go about life in a way that's more constructive. What I love so much about your answer is, um, you know, acting to me is so much about the heart and the soul. And like, um, like you said, there's like a spirituality in it be because you're when like opening up yourself, you're allowing some greater part of who we are in. And how beautiful that a lot of the recommendations you're making are about that kind of openness to life. Yeah. Some of us, you know, think uh, that why should I go into these kind of eccentric things? And um, but but uh, I would say it's because of its simplicity. Mm. It, simplicity is its greatness. I used to have the teacher that says always Etienne de Croo used to say that genius is in simplicity, and these books are truly, truly informative, inspiring, and especially as actors opening up our imagination to things that are beyond the omelette we eat every morning. <laughs> That's great. Is there anything else you'd like to say that we haven't covered for, you know, um, I, lo I know a lot of SAG after actors are, are watching this. Anything you'd like to say to them that I didn't ask you about. Well, I would like to say bon courage and hopefully our world will become better after these crises that we are encountering these days and that we all enjoy finally being in the same room together and being inspired by each other and being fed by each other and uh, and that you, Jessica, give me such a great joy to see you. Oh, I wish I could give you a hug. <laughs> when are we going to be able to hug each other again? <laughs> we will. We will. We have to hope for it. We have to hope for better days. I mean, there are not uh, many hints that these better days are going to happen soon. 
but we have to hope for them. Yeah, they are gonna, they're coming. I can sense it. And you see through, through every um, tragedy, you, you do see a greater connection of, of humanity kind of like rise. And that's, you're it's right. a beautiful thing to see. You are right. We'll see after November what happens. Also. <sighs> that's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> Um, so I think I'm supposed to say, um, we're, you know, this talk was about the documentary coming out, which is the same title as your book, Creating a Character. And um, it's going to be in virtual cinemas on Friday, June 19th. More info, firstrunfeatures.com. So I was very happy to be a part of this film and very happy to talk to you today and celebrate you. Um, and uh, I'm not, I know I'm not alone. I'm, I stand shoulder to shoulder with the hundreds and thousands of artists who have walked along your path and um, you've given us so much. So I, I have immense gratitude um, to you because the, my time at Juilliard, those four years I look at when I love being a mom and I love all these things, but as me separate from anyone else it was the it was the best time of my life and it was the most um learning um evolving time of my life and a huge part of that is because of you so thank you very, thank very you much. so much i appreciate that and i love you very much i love you <laughs> i love your family <laughs> and uh, I have, I, i'll see you when this thing's over yes indeed yes indeed yeah yeah. <laughs>